The Cube at Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible and Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV. This is our event covering all the big data innovation in Silicon Valley, covering all the news here. Also, the Strata Conference going right behind us and the, it's the Santa Clara Convention Center. Uh, and we're at the Hilton live all day for day three of our Big Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick uh, from SiliconANGLE, the Cube. Uh, we're here with John Schweitzer, EVP of Field Operations for Datastax, um, a company we've been had, had on, on the Cube many times. Um, you know, you don't hear a lot about data stacks compared to all the other names out there, but when you hear about who's got the traction, um, that's top of the list. So, John, welcome to theCUBE. Great to have you on. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So, we to talk here. to Billy all the time, and we always say, hey, you know, how's business? And, and literally every conversation over the past three years is, business is great, and it just seems to be moving the ball down the field. Yeah. You guys are a pretty humble company, yeah. um, but doing great work on the high end. Give us the update on uh, one, how's business, uh, big data obviously is a growth market. Now you're hearing in the Hadoop world as it matures, um, people talking about budgets. You guys have kind of with Cassandra been <laughs> tapping budgets for a while now. So just share with us yeah. some of the updates. Yeah, look, I, so we're rocking um, and we're having a good time. The, you know, at the same time, business is great. Um, Cassandra, as you know, is this always on fully distributed database um, and we're revolutionizing the online world. Online and mobile applications are key to uh, our, cu uh, our customers' uh, loyalty with their customers and uh, the expansion of their business. And um, they're looking for new ways um, to engage with their customers and suppliers. You know, we've always talked about when we did the Cassandra Summit two years ago with the Cube, it was uh, kind of a small geeky event. The founders were there and a lot of the community is very tight. But one of the things that we, we identified was the movement of Flash with the Flash uh, memory, you saw a real push towards kind of using commodity hardware and open source software to really tackle not POCs but real high transactional environments. Um, and you guys were tapping that, and that's been some success. You guys, I know you guys have some good uh, reference accounts there. Um, what's changed since then, two years ago, with Cassandra and and some of the deployments that you guys are doing? So I think what's changed on the customer side is the SLAs keep going up. The service level agreements that our customers have with their customers and consumers in the market are off the charts. So um, our technology helps them engage with our customers in a different way to either decrease fraud, um, increase uh, supplier relationship, uh, or increase loyalty with customers. So. so what's the biggest use cases that you're seeing right now? Talk about, you, you talk to customers all the time. What's yeah. the big pain points? What's your key, yeah. key uh, itch that, they, that they're trying to scratch? Is it high end? What's the, some of the market segments that you guys are winning at right now? It is, I'll just say, you know, we're now 400 plus customers in 38 countries, believe it or not. Um, the trending industries that we're seeing are uh, financial services, specifically um, retail banking and, and uh, capital markets, media, telco. Um, some of the biggest um, brand names that you've heard, heard from us are obviously Netflix. Um, but most recently, you know, I'm really psyched to, um, to learn more and more about how they're evolving their business with us. Um, they introduced profiles not long ago on their um, site, and that uh, sort of took up their volume by four or five times. Um, and that means we're, we're uh, running a trillion transactions a day through our technology to help them engage our customers and us differently. You're the EVP of field operations. What does that mean? I mean, what is your job? What do you do? <laughs> means I travel a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was brought here by Billy and the board to expand our international opera operation and our partnerships. Um, I obviously have a ton of experience in field as well, um, most really, uh, uh, recently running a multi-billion dollar business at SAP. Um, but my core focus at EVP is everything customer related. Customer engagement, sales, services, training, et cetera, making sure that our customers are happy. So John, you've been, you were at Oracle for a, big, you know, for a while, big time, big time database and an SAP. So talk about a little bit of the evolution of the market. Um, with a company like uh, DataStax and Cassandra and why you've left those big guys to come here. Yeah, I had a good career at Oracle and SAP, but I came here because the opportunity is massive. I've been in the database uh, market and data management for 20 years. Um, I, I've been involved in disrupting relational databases two times. Once at a company called Arbor Software with Olap technology, 
and then with, with, with SAP HANA, where we went head to head with Oracle and chipped that away. Um, so while that's why they came to find me, I think the opportunity is huge and that's why I'm here. So, so where do you think we are then on kind of the, the, the evolution of some of these new technologies on the database side yeah. and the growth here, where before we talked about the, the, the show used to be a lot more sweatshirts and hoodies, and now it seems to be a lot more suits and business guys. I mean, yeah. are we really kind of coming out of the the experimental phase and really started getting some good production stuff and seeing the ROI? Uh, we certainly think so. Look, the market is nascent and, 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 and growing and developing, um, but we're seeing more and more engagement with the line of business buyers. So while our community is, is, is highly engaged with the developer and the hoodie, uh, and we'll continue, uh, continue to do that, we're getting more and more traction with the line of business buyers because they need a different way to engage with their customers online. So what is the thing about the database market? We always talk about the trends, right? So that, you know, you've been there before. So put, put your industry hat on, not so much your uh, data stacks hat, although you might want to weave in some data stacks anecdotes in there. But you know, we always talk about the database industry kind of being disrupted by open source. And, and the diss on, on Hadoop has been, uh, in the early days, it's open source is not yet stable. Then it became great for storage, right? Storing a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, data lake, data landfill, whatever people call it. Uh, but now you're seeing this gold in those hills, right? So you're seeing that kind of move into the large enterprise. Um, what What is their large customers? How do they evaluate this new big data open source world? I mean, you're in there uh, with Cassandra. What are some of the customer uh, criteria for success? I mean, is it a database? Are we rehauling the database market? Is this a complete reconstruction? Or is it kind of like piecemeal, uh, SQL here, uh, Hadoop here, yeah. and Cassandra here? And we're definitely seeing a movement of, of best of breed come back to these database architectures. It's, it's not, not uh, relational or Hadoop for everything. Um, and just to be clear, we're flanking what, what our Hadoop counterparts are doing in terms of, of sourcing information uh, information from them to do things like with um, eBay, where we source information from Hadoop to um, provide recommendations on their site. Um, so it's a, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's a team sport at the database layer. It's not single threaded. It can't be any longer. The, SL, the SLAs just won't be met by our customers without a different way of thinking. Do you think HANA was built kind of too early or too late relative to its use case? I mean, people have some successes with HANA. Some call it a Ferrari, uh, you know, great if the roads are, you can handle the speed, but people want different kinds of, of scale, not just one dimension. What's your take on HANA? And is it is it positioned in, in pigeonholed or is it broader? I mean, what's, what's the opportunity on HANA? HANA is a, a, a phenomenal invention um, by the uh, management team. The inventors at SAP. Um, it's reimagining the analytics world um, and, and has really taken it to the Teradatas um, and the teases of the world. Um, we're different. Um, we're on the real-time workload, data with low latency side of things. We believe we're di 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 uh, different there not only than HANA but than other databases. What, do you, what would you say to the folks out there who are watching who want to know, hey, you know what, all the buzz on Hadoop, I've heard about Cassandra. I have friends that you know doing some Cassandra stuff. What should they know about the folks who are who should be looking at it? What do you say to them out there about Cassandra and what you guys are doing around it uh, in terms of production and moving on value proposition? Up? Yeah. So Cassandra is this always-on, fully distributed database that meets these SLAs that I'm talking about. DataStack specifically is the enterprise production-ready version of of Cassandra, and we deliver secure. Um, um, enterprise ready management services, tools and services around it. And um, it, it is, you know, in most com you know, conversations, there is a level of um, understanding that's starting to evolve where Hadoop versus Cassandra and understanding that Cassandra is, is, uh, is delivering this value proposition across real time workloads and online applications. So I'm checking out the website and I love the, the new website. DataStax helps attendees, Strata attendees and big data SV attendees uh, navigate the big data maze. Put ops on autopilot. Um, the dev, um, dev center 1.0. So is, it sounds like simplicity is something that you guys are focused yeah. in on. Can you talk about what that means? I mean, obviously, you know, people want to get their hands on it. How, what are you guys offering there? What's the, a what's the big aha uh -huh for you guys with that? So these management services and monitoring are key. So we heard uh, from our customers oh, about eight to 10 months ago that we needed to improve here. And the, the development team, our engineering team delivered. And so we need to make this technology extremely easy to adopt, acquire, and install and make it inspiring at the developer level. It's critically important. 
So John, talk a little bit about the partner program, which is what your, yeah. your primary focus yeah. is. Um, so again, by this announcement with, that you did deal with Accenture, I used to manage an Accenture relationship for technology company long ago. It's a tough, it's a tough partner to move because they're not going to come with you unless they see the real opportunity to build a business yep. around that technology. So talk a little bit about that announcement and some of the other kind of ecosystem um, things that you're excited about building. Yeah, and so Accenture is tough to move, but they only move, as you said, if, if there's interest in innovation happening. Um, so what we announced here at Strat uh, Strata two days ago was the launch of Datastack's partner network. Um, and what that really means is an engagement with our partners and prospective partners around enabling them to bring these great technologies to the market. We believe we're different in this space. We're providing free training and enablement to those partners, a, um, a way for them to architect and build their go-to-market go with us and around us and build this joint uh, value proposition that, that will uh, not only develop our business but theirs as well. Yeah. yeah. Good. What's the update on the company? I mean, we've been big, big fans of you guys. We know we've got Elisa Green was recently hired on the on the PR side, and uh, she got she came from HP. Uh, Clint Smith over there recently hired the general counsel. Uh, so Billy's got a great experience. What's what's the update on the company size, yeah. traction? Give, give some of the stats. Give, give us an insight into what's going on with the company. Yeah. So the momentum is big in lots of different areas, from employee growth. Um, we're uh, greater than 220 people today. We're bringing on great talent, as you point out. Uh, brought on a, what I would call a celebrity CFO in Dennis Wolf just recently as well. So Billy's <laughs> not to be confused with the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, kind of get that in there. No, Dennis from Fusion IO and MySQL. So he's seen yeah, this play before, yeah, yeah, right? He's right. a great guy, definitely sees it, and he's going to help us sort of with his wisdom chart our path towards uh, where we want to go here. What do you guys think about the whole in-memory movement? Obviously, you're at real. You talk about real time, and, and obviously, Spark has got and runs interest. You got Storm. All these things are happening. Um, how do customers deal with real time? Obviously, on the high end, you got in-memory database stuff. On the financial services guys love this, but maybe some of the, the hyperscale ad guy, uh, web server guys, web guys like it. But yeah. what does in-memory mean to the, to the typical enterprise? I mean, speed, doesn't it? Um, so uh, we're not standing still on the innovation side. Uh, we have a a launch of 4.0 coming up here um, at the end of this month. Um, and on the in-memory topic, um, I would just say keep your ears open. So you got some we're new excited. stuff coming we're, out. We're psyched about what's coming out. Where are your customers taking you guys? I mean, obviously you have some good good benchmarks, you have some good successes. Where's the, where's the, where, where is the boat going to from the data stacks perspective? Where do you see your customers taking the product yeah. uh, in terms of the roadmap? Yeah, most of the use cases we see are um, in air, areas where high, high customer connection or supplier connection exists. So things like messaging, um, the Internet of Things, or IoT, um, recommendations and playlists, fraud, which by the way is a trillion dollar problem in the world. Um, we're seeing a significant amount of, of uptake there. And for example, you know, we've got one of the biggest banks in our country, in the world, in, you know, engaged with us, helping, we're helping them fix this fraud issue, just as an example. Final question, put a, put a bumper sticker on this event, this moment in time, Big Data SV, um, you know, 2014, Strata Conference, a lot of buzz, a lot of new startups, some names I've never heard of, I mean, some will win, some will lose, people find in their position, you're seeing the Hadoop market kind of mature, you guys are, are exploding and having and going into a great direction. What, what should, what's the moment about, what should people know about what's happening right now in the big data industry as of this moment? Yeah, I, well, we're seeing the, gro the normal growth from the U.S., the maturity of the U.S. market, go over to Europe. For us, we'll continue to expand in, in Europe more broadly next year or this year, um, and we'll enter into Asia as well. I think what you're going to see in big data is that the name big data goes away. Um, big data is data of all sizes, not just big data, uh, data. The use cases need to be more prevalent, value-based. So you'll start to hear more about value proposition and ROI in 2015. And we were saying uh, on the cube, Dave and I've been talking about this all the time, and even Ed Dunbell has been reiterating as well. E-business was a big term kicked around the '90s with the web. No one ever talked about it anymore. It's just all, all on yeah, the web. So I think business. big data will be the fabric. The question will be, what's the outcomes? Yeah. And that's really kind of what we're focused on. Well, John, sure. thanks for coming on the cube. Really thanks, appreciate guys. it. Data stacks. You're hiring. You're doing well. Um, Great guys over there, a bunch of alumni from theCUBE been on, Billy and the team, congratulations on your success. And this is theCUBE, we're here at Big Data SV and at the Hilton Live. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.